Wake, for the sun who scattered into flight the stars before him from the field of night, drives night along with them from heaven and strikes the sultan's turret with a shaft of light. Before the phantom of false morning died, and he thought a voice within the tavern cried, When all the temple is prepared within, why nods the drowsy worshipper outside? And, as the cock crew, those who stood before the tavern shouted, Open then the door! You know how little while we have to stay, and once departed may return no more. Now the new year reviving old desires, the thoughtful soul to solitude retires, where the white hand of Moses on the bow puts out, and Jesus from the ground suspires. Iram indeed is gone with all his rows, and Jamshid's seven-ringed cup where no one knows, but still a ruby kindles in the vine, and many a garden by the water blows. And David's lips are locked, but in divine high-piping pale of thee, with wine, 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 red wine, the nightingale cries to the rose, that sallow cheek of hers, to incarnadine. Come, fill the cup, and in the fire of spring your winter garment of repentance fling. The bird of time has but a little way to flutter, and the bird is on the wing. Whether at Neshapur or Babylon, whether the cup with sweet or bitter run, the wine of life keeps oozing drop by drop, the leaves of life keep falling one by one. Each morn a thousand roses brings, you say. Yes, but where leaves the rose of yesterday? And this first summer month that brings the rose— shall take Jamshid and Kekobad away. Well, let it take them. What have we to do with Kekobad, the great, or Kekosur? Let Zal and Rustum bluster as they will, or Hatim call to supper, heed not you. With me along the strip of herbage strown, that just divides the desert from the sown, where name of slave and sultan is forgot, and peace to Mahmud on his golden throne. A book of verses underneath the bough, a jug of wine, a loaf of bread, and thou beside me, singing to the wilderness. O oh, wilderness and paradise, e now! Some for the glories of this world, and some sigh for the prophet's paradise to come. Ah, oh, take the cash, and let the credit go, nor heed the rumble of a distant drum. Look at the blowing rose about us, Lo, laughing, she says, into the world I blow, at once the silken tassel of my purse tear, and its treasure on the garden throw. And those who husbanded the golden grain, and those who flung it to the winds like rain, alike to no such aureate earth are turned as buried once, men want dug up again. The worldly hope men set their hearts upon turns ashes, or it prospers, and anon, like snow upon the desert's dusty face, lighting a little hour or two, is gone. Think in this battered caravanserai, whose portals are altered night and day, how sultan after sultan, with his pomp, abode his destined hour, and went his way. They say the lion and the lizard keep the courts, where Jamshid gloried and drank deep, and Bahram, that great hunter, the wild ass stamps o'er his head, but cannot break his sleep. I sometimes think that never blows so red the rose as where some buried Caesar bled, that every hyacinth the garden wears, dropped in her lap from some once lovely head. And this reviving herb, whose tender green fledges the river lip on which we lean, ah, lean upon it lightly, for who knows from what once lovely lip it springs unseen. Ah, oh, my beloved, fill the cup that clears today of past regrets and future fears. Tomorrow, why, tomorrow I may be myself with yesterday's seven thousand years. For some we loved, the loveliest and the best, that from his vintage rolling, time hath pressed, have drunk their cup a round or two before, and one by one crept silently to rest. And we, that now make merry in the room they left, and summer dresses in new bloom, 
Ourselves must we beneath the couch of earth descend, ourselves to make a couch for whom? Ah, uh, make the most of what we yet may spend, before we too into the dust descend. Dust into dust, and under dust to lie, sans wine, sans song, sans singer, and sans end. Alike, for those who for today prepare, and those that after some tomorrow stare, a muezzin from the tower of darkness cries, Fools! Your reward is neither here nor there. Why, all the saints and sages who discussed of the two worlds so wisely, they are thrust like foolish prophets forth, their words to scorn are scattered, and their mouths are stopped with dust. Myself, when young, did eagerly frequent doctor and saint, and heard great argument about it and about, but evermore, came out by the same door where I went in. With them the seed of wisdom did I sow, and with mine own hand wrought to make it grow, and this was all the harvest that I reaped. I came like water, and like wind I go. Into this universe, and why not knowing nor whence, like water willy-nilly flowing, and out of it, as wind along the waste, I know not whither, willy-nilly blowing. What, without asking, hither hurried whence, and without asking, whither hurried hence? Oh, many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown the memory of that insolence. Up from earth's center through the seventh gate I rose, and on the throne of Saturn sate, and many a knot unraveled by the road, but not the master knot of human fate. There was the door to which I found no key, there was the veil through which I might not see, some little talk a while of me and thee. There was, and then, no more of thee and me. Earth could not answer, nor the seas that mourn in flowing purple, of their lord forlorn, nor rolling heaven with all his signs revealed and hidden by the sleeve of night and morn. Then of the thee and me who works behind the veil, I lifted up my hands to find a lamp amid the darkness, and I heard as from without, the me within thee blind. Then to the lip of this poor earthen urn I leaned, the secret of my life to learn, and lip to lip it murmured, While you live, drink. For once dead, you never shall return. I think the vessel that with fugitive articulation answered, once did live and drink, and ah, uh, the passive lip I kissed, how many kisses might it take and give. For I remember stopping by the way to watch a potter thumping his wet clay, and with its all obliterated tongue it murmured, Gently, brother, gently pray. And has not such a story from of old down man's successive generations rolled, of such a clod of saturated earth cast by the Maker into human mold? And not a drop that from our cups we throw for earth to drink of, but may steal below to quench the fire of anguish in some eye there hidden, far beneath and long ago? As then the tulip for her morning sap of heavenly vintage from the soil looks up, do you devoutly do the like? till heaven to earth in virtue, like an empty cup. Perplexed no more with human or divine, tomorrow's tangle to the winds resign, and lose your fingers in the tresses of the cypress slender mistress of wine. And if the wine you drink, the lip you press, end in what all begins and ends in yes, think then you are today what yesterday you were. Tomorrow you shall not be less. So when that angel of the darker drink at last shall find you by the river brink, and offering his cup invite your soul forth to your lips to quaff, you shall not shrink. Why, if the soul can fling the dust aside and naked on the air of heaven ride, weren't not a shame, weren't not a shame for him in this clay carcass crippled to abide? Tis but a tent where takes his one day's rest, a sultan to the realm of death addressed. The sultan rises, and the dark Faresh strikes and prepares it for another guest. And fear not, lest existence closing your account and mine 
should know the like no more. The eternal Saki from that bowl has poured millions of bubbles like us, and will pour. When you and I behind the veil are past, oh, but the long, long while the world shall last, which of our coming and departure heeds as the sea's self should heed a pebble cast. A moment's halt, a momentary taste of being from the well amid the waste, and lo, the phantom caravan has reached the nothing it set out for. Oh, make haste. Would you that spangle of existence spend about the secret? Quick about it, friend. A hair perhaps divides the false from true, and upon what, prithee, may life depend? A hair perhaps divides the false and true. Yes, and a single a leaf with a clue, could you but find it, to the treasure house, and peradventure to the master, too whose secret presence through creation's veins, running quicksilver-like, eludes your pains, taking all shapes from ma to mahi, and they change and perish all, but he remains. A moment guessed, then back behind the fold, immersed of darkness round the drama rolled, which, for the pastime of eternity, he doth himself contrive, enact, behold, but if in vain, down on the stubborn floor of earth, and up the heaven's unopening door, you gaze today, while you are you, how then tomorrow, when you shall be you no more? Waste not your hour, nor in the vain pursuit of this and that endeavor and dispute. Better be jocund with the fruitful grape, than saddened after none, or bitter fruit. You know, my friends, with what a brave carouse I made a second marriage in my house— divorced old barren reason from my bed, and took the daughter of the vine to spouse. For is and is not, though with rule and line, and up and down by logic I define, of all that one should care to fathom, I was never deep in anything but wine. Ah, by my computations, people say, reduce the year to better reckoning? Nay, twas only striking from the calendar— unborn tomorrow, and dead yesterday. And lately by the tavern door agape came shining through the dusk an angel shape, bearing a vessel on his shoulder, and he bid me taste of it, and twas the grape. The grape, that can with logic absolute the two and seventy jarring sects confute, the sovereign alchemist that in a trice life's leaden metal into gold transmute. The mighty Mahmud, Allah-breathing Lord, that all the misbelieving and black horde of fears and sorrows that infest the soul scatters before him with his whirlwind sword. Why be this juice the growth of God, who dare blaspheme the twisted tendril as a snare? A blessing, we should use it, should we not? And if a curse, why then, who set it there? I must abjure the balm of life, I must— Scared by some after-reckoning ta'en on trust, or lured with hope of some diviner drink to fill the cup when crumbled into dust. Of threats of hell and hopes of paradise, one thing at least is certain. This life flies. One thing is certain, and the rest is lies. The flower that once has blown forever dies. Strange, is it not? that the myriads who before us pass the door of darkness through, not one returns to tell us of the road, which to discover we must travel too. The revelations of devout and learned, who rose before us and as prophets burned, are all but stories, which, awoke from sleep, they told their comrades, and to sleep returned. I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me, and answered, I myself am heaven and hell. Heaven, but the vision of fulfilled desire, and hell, the shadow from a soul on fire, cast on the darkness onto which ourselves so late emerged from, shall so soon expire. We are no other than a moving row of magic shadow shapes that come and go round with the sun-illumined lantern held in midnight, by the master of the show. 
but helpless pieces of the game he plays. Upon this checkerboard of nights and days, hither and thither moves and checks and slays, and one by one, back in the closet lays. The ball no question makes of eyes and nose, but here and there as strikes the player goes, and he that tossed you down into the field, he knows about it all, he knows, he knows. The moving finger writes, and, having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. And that inverted bowl they call the sky, where under crawling cooped we live and die, lift not your hands to it for help, for it as impotently moves as you or I. With earth's first clay they did the last man need, and there of the last harvest sowed the seed, and the first morning of creation wrote what the last dawn of reckoning shall read. Yesterday, this day's madness did prepare, tomorrow's silence, triumph, or despair. Drink, for you know not whence you came, nor why. Drink, for you know not why you go, nor where. I tell you this, when, started from the goal, over the flaming shoulders of the foal of heaven, Parwin and Mushtari they flung, in my predestined plot of dust and soul. The vine had struck a fiber, which about it clings my being, let the dervish flout. Of my base metal may be filled a key, that shall unlock the door he howls without. And this I know, whether the one true light kindled to love or wrath consume me quite, one flash of it within the tavern caught better than in the temple lost outright. What, out of senseless nothing to provoke a conscious something, to resent the yoke of unpermitted pleasure, under pain of everlasting penalties if broke? What, from his helpless creature be repaid pure gold for what he lent him dross allayed, sue for a debt he never did contract, and cannot answer? Oh, the sorry trade! O oh, thou, who didst with pitfall and with gin beset the road I was to wander in, thou wilt not with predestined evil round enmesh, and then impute my fall to sin. O oh, thou, who man of baser earth didst make, and even with paradise devise the snake, for all the sin wherewith the face of man is blackened, man's forgiveness give and take. As under cover of departing day, slunk hunger-stricken Ramazan away, once more within the potter's house alone I stood, surrounded by the shapes of clay. Shapes of all sorts and sizes, great and small, that stood along the floor and by the wall, and some loquacious vessels were, and some listened, perhaps, but never talked at all. One said among them, Surely not in vain my substance of the common earth was ta'en, and to this figure molded to be broke, or trampled back to shapeless earth again. Then said a second, Ne'er a peevish boy would break the bowl from which he drank in joy, and he that with his hand the vessel made will surely not, in after wrath, destroy. After a momentary silence spake, some vessel of a more ungainly make, They sneer at me for leaning all awry. What? Did the hand then of the potter shake? For that, some one of the loquacious lot, I think a Sufi pipkin, waxing hot. All this of pot and potter. Tell me then, who is the potter, pray, and who the pot? Why, said another, some there are who tell of one who threatens he will toss to hell the luckless pots he marred in making. Pish! He's a good fellow, and will all be well. Well, murmured one, let who so make or buy. My clay with long oblivion is gone dry, but fill me with the old familiar juice, methinks I might recover by and by. So while the vessels one by one were speaking, the little moon looked in that all were seeking, and then they jogged each other. Brother, brother, now for the porter's shoulders not a creaking. Ah, let the grape my fading life provide and wash the body whence the life has died, and lay me shrouded in the living leaf, 
by some not unfrequented garden side. That even buried ashes such a snare of vintage shall fling up into the air, as not a true believer passing by, but shall be overtaken, unaware. Indeed, the idols I have loved so long have done my credit in this world much wrong, have drowned my glory in a shallow cup, and sold my reputation for a song. Indeed, indeed, repentance oft before I swore, but was I sober when I swore? And then, and then came spring, and rose in hand, my threadbare penitence a piece is tore. And much as wine has played the infidel, and robbed me of my robe of honor, well, I wonder often what the vintners buy, one half so precious as the stuff they sell. Yet, ah, uh, that spring should vanish with the rose, that youth's sweet-scented manuscript should close, the nightingale that in the branches sang, ah, uh, whence and whither flown again, who knows? Would but the desert of the fountain yield one glimpse, if dimly, yet indeed revealed, to which the fainting traveller might spring, as springs the trampled herbage of the field, would but some winged angel, ere too late, arrest the yet unfolded roll of fate, and make the stern recorder otherwise in register, or quite obliterate. Oh, love, could you and I with him conspire to grasp this sorry scheme of things entire, would not we shatter it to bits, and then remold it nearer to the heart's desire. Yon rising moon that looks for us again, how oft hereafter will she wax and wane? How oft hereafter rising look for us through this same garden, and for one in vain? And when like her, O oh, Saki, you shall pass among the guests star scattered on the grass, and in your joyous errand reach the spot where I made one, turn down an empty glass.